Hi, this is Andrew Cowan from JapaneseRiceCookers.net. I'm just making my lunch and I thought I'd show you just how easy it is to make this great tasting all-in-one dish in your rice cooker. So at the moment I've just got some water and some Japanese kombu which is just a piece of seaweed like this. Now it's been in the pot for about an hour or so. I've not added any heat yet, all I've been doing is just letting it soak. So if we take a look at that, it's just like a real bit of kelp seaweed in there. Kind of a bit slimy. So we just need to start adding some heat to get the flavour out of that. Okay, so all we're going to do is bring this to the boil and then we can add some fish flakes, that's katsuobushi, and that makes a dashi base for our dish. So while that's cooking just now, let's get the rice ready. Okay, so we need just one one cup of rice. I'm just making a dish for myself, so one cup is kind of like one really big serving, or what I usually do is just have one serving and then go in for some seconds. So yeah, the actual dish that I'm going to make is basically just rice with a dashi stock and then I've got some salmon, tin salmon here, that's 90 grams and then just add a little bit of soy sauce and that's it, just cook it all up in the rice cooker and it comes out a real nice fish rice. So yeah, let's just wash the rice as normal. So the actual preparation of this dish hardly takes any time at all. The only thing you have to worry about is the, the pre-soaking of your seaweed. So on the website I'll put down a list of all the ingredients that we need. Okay, so that's the first rinse, so you can see that's still real nice and milky. So get rid of that. Let's get another rinse now. And you can see already it's a lot, a lot clearer. I'm just going to run this video all the way through so there's no editing so you can see exactly just how long it takes. So it should really be within 10 minutes that we can start the dish cooking. So we 
wash the rice three times, so just need to rinse it off now. And when you pour the water in really fast, that just helps to bring the kind of rice dust that's in there up to the top, which you can just pour off. So that's looking pretty good. So because I'm going to be adding some stock into this, I want to get rid of as much water as I can. So you can either use a colander or just try and carefully pour off all the water. Okay, so I've got a few grains of rice in my hand there. Try that again, just see if we can get some more. The reason I do it this way as opposed to using colander is just because it saves on washing up. And plus I've only got one colander which I'll be using to strain the, the soup stock. Okay, so that's the rice ready. This. Okay, this is almost boiling. So when we're making dashi, we pretty much wait for it to come almost to the boil, or just as it's boiling, we whip out the kombu or the kelp seaweed. And then the next thing is to add in some katsubushi. I think it's called bonito flakes. In English. I just usually go for a handful. So just chuck that in. And this is, you can just eat this as it is, and it makes quite a good topping for a lot of Japanese foods. In this case, we're using it just to make the stock to add to the rice. And there's there's loads of videos on YouTube about how to make dashi stock, but all I'm doing here is letting this boil and then the fish flakes are going to eventually sink down towards the bottom of the pan and then at that stage we can strain get rid of the solids. Now the, the kelp that I took out earlier we can actually cook that to eat along with our rice I'll, I'll do that in a different video. Today I'm just going to get the rice dish prepared. So that's almost ready. Well, that's boiling. I'm just going to pour off the liquid from the tin salmon. Okay, so when I'm going to strain my dashi, all I have is hot 
sorry, a bowl, and then colander with some kitchen towel in there. It doesn't matter if a little bit of the fish flakes get through. It's just to get out the biggest pieces, or get rid of the biggest pieces. So you perhaps can't see it on the video, but most of the fish flakes are all almost sunk down to the bottom, so just turn off the heat. So that's pretty much what we've got. Just turn my fan on. And then just pour it in. So the amount of water I used when I was making this was around about a litre, I don't measure out accurately, just pour it into the pot. It's quite hot, but still a fair bit of liquid in there. That'll do. And then just measuring cup. I don't really measure out too accurately when I'm adding the stock into the rice. If you were making just normal white rice, you'd go up to the the marking for since I've got one one cup of rice, I'd go up to the level one marking for white rice, but because we're adding in some fish as well. I go above above that marking. So at the moment I'm up to about level one or for white rice. I kind of go between level one for white rice and level one for brown rice. If you only got one if you only got to the level one with for the liquid, the rice can end up just a little bit dry. But then if you get it too wet, it's a bit sticky and gooey, so... Okay, so that's just below the number one for brown rice. And then we've got some fish. This is just 90 grams of fish. So pretty much any sort of tin fish that you like. I try to go for fish that's um, not in oil but in water, just a personal preference. And I kind of mash it up a little bit as I'm putting it in. swirl around and then the last thing just a little bit of soy sauce and that just gives a nice bit of colour okay so there's tons of dashi there so that'll be enough for another day or two to make either the same dish or for something else and then we just give the bowl a wipe and stick it in the rice cooker. And that's it. So in about 50 minutes or so, I'll have a nice fish rice to get stuck into for my lunch. Thanks.